All right. This is my dog. This is what uh all of us riders always dream about. Especially when we get a, a first bike or a new bike. Um, we name them. So I had a couple of bikes. My previous bike was a uh, Ninja uh, 300 dope bike. Name was Gypsy Danger. And I had a Ninja uh, 250 before that. And that was Finity One. So now I moved up. Moving up, this is my Yamaha R3. I love this freaking bike. And the name of the bike is Bravo Savior. So let's uh, take this crap off of here, protector. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, this is the boring part, but. What are you doing? What are you doing? Wait, you gotta doing? see. It's kind of bright out here, so I can't really see <laughs> what's going on because the sun is like really directly right behind me. But I hope you guys can see what's going on right now. So, bear with me. All right, I'm just gonna take that, I'll toss that to the front, and there she is. All her glory. Big rain. Uh, yesterday, uh, didn't have time to clean it, so you're getting it. You get her in her raw form. It's the Yamaha R3. This is the uh, teal and reddish orange color, dark orange. Basically, it's the it's the Miami Dolphins. You know color scheme or you can say the miami hurricanes you know color scheme um i love this freaking bike this bike is has some great torque you know down low um it's got some nice speed to it like and you know a lot of guys who has the real big bikes you know the 1000 cc's you know, they're realizing they can't really ride it in the city. And, you know, because it's just too super fast. Like, it's like you're on a sports, you know, track. And, you know, I've seen guys get tickets. I've seen guys almost crash in corners. Like, you know, it's freaking crazy. But um, we'll get into that later. But just wanted to give you a, a view, a little overview of what, what she looks like. Color schemes and graphics. Um, this bike tops out at about, um, a hundred and for me it's about 106 miles per hour. They say it's about 110. Some people said 115. Um, I'm a little heavier. I'm actually, I'm 6'2". I'm about 200 and, you know, 40 pounds. So naturally your weight is going to have, you know, factor, you know, factor into that. But I fit on it, you know, just fine. Um, it is extremely comfortable. Um, I would say maybe if you're like 6'4 and up, you might feel a little bit scrunched, but I'm 6'2. Um, and, you know, my knees are just past a little bit of a, you know, 90 degree angles, you know, a little bit more than that, but it feels good when I'm on a roll, man. For some reason, between this and um, my uh, Ninja, um, this bike feels actually taller, it feels bigger, it looks actually bigger, um, especially when you put it next to the, um, the higher CC bikes, um, it's, it's weird, like, how they, how they did this, um, the foot pads seem to be a little bit longer, um, so I never have issues of my feet falling off the sides of me, like, it's just, this is, this is the most, I haven't ridden that many bikes, but this is the most comfortable bike that I've ridden um, out of all the bikes. I've sat on a few bikes, you know, when I've gone to um, the dealerships, and I wanted to get the uh, MTO3, that's gonna be my next bike, but, um, 
I don't know. I have reservations. I sat on it. I didn't really feel too comfortable on it, even though it's a it's a naked bike and I'm not really into naked bikes. I like the sport bikes, but that bike actually looks really good. The MTO3, um, the Ninja 400, the, uh, the Naked, those look uh, really good too. The Ninja 400 would actually, was actually really comfortable. Right? Um, I like to pay cash, you know, cash for my bikes. Um, so I don't have to worry about making payments, you know, I just pay insurance and all that stuff, which is like dirt, dirt cheap. Um, but we'll get into that for another video. But, alright, let's get into this video about, you know, how to ride pretty much, you know, how to use the controls, you know, of your motorcycle. And I hope everybody can hear me. Um, first things first, um, your bike is always going to be off, you know, hopefully it's off. Uh, let's show you the switches real quick. This switch right here is your, um... Your high beams, you know, flashes, pass by, or make sure whatever you, you know, you click that. Uh, this is your high beam, you know, low beam. You know, you switch it back and forward, up or down, for the turn off. Um, you got your horn. You got your horn right here. This is the horn. So you can see, it's your horn button. Always use that. Right under that is your turn signals. Make sure you use your turn signals. That's very important. I don't know about you guys in Florida, but the, the drivers out here are crazy. And I'll get into that in another video too as well. Um, and this is your all important <laughs> clutch driver right here. You're really going to have to learn how to use the clutch in order to ride to ride a motorcycle. Um, especially at low speeds. If you can't ride at low speeds, and I'm talking about between 0 and 10 miles per hour, you cannot ride a motorcycle. It's easy to go straight and fast, but when it's time to go slow in traffic, if you don't know how to use that clutch with throttle control and every other, every else, other, every other, every other thing you're supposed to do, um, you're gonna fail miserably. So this clutch, clutch is very important. Um, so now we're gonna go below. This is your, this is your, your shifter right here. This is your shifter. So your gears, how your gears work is, this is a gearbox of uh, six. So basically it's one down and five up. Um, in between um, one and two, first and second gear, it's, it's um, neutral. So basically to get into neutral, you basically have to put your foot under here and just slightly lift up when the when the bike is still and you'll see a green light go on in your dashboard which I'll show you in um in a, in a little bit I'll let you know that the bike is in neutral right there I think my bike is in first is in first gear I'll explain that too as well while leaving the first gear so this is your shifter it's going to help you go from first gear to second gear third gear you know when you reach a certain speed and rpm levels to uh, go up um and speed um this is naturally your foot peg this is your rear foot peg, you know, your rear foot peg right here for a passenger. I normally don't take passengers, no, no need to. Um, it's not really, you know, something I do. I'm pretty much a, you know, solo rider for the most part. Uh, this is my tail bag. Um, we'll get into that too as well, but this is pretty much my trunk where I keep all of my supplies, you know, my supplies in. I'm about going around. This is the little you know, insignia graphic. Love this, you know, this is the tail piece. A lot of people don't like this tail piece. Um, I actually took it off my last bike. Um, and it looked, you know, really good. But a lot of people don't like it because they say it looks funny. It looks like a fish tail, a dolphin tail. The reason why I'm keeping it on this bike for resale value for one, but secondly, this really helps protect against rain, mud, and all of that stuff from literally just dropping, you know, on, you know, onto the tires, you know, from, you know, from above. And also, if somebody rear ends you from the back, you know, at least, you know, this is going to be kind of like the first thing, you know, the first thing that hit, that um, that it hit. So 
it's kind of somewhat of a protection. Um, it's not a true all be all, but it's there, and I'm not going to take it off. So this is your other foot peg for the rear passenger. This is your this is your foot peg, you know, for you, you know, and these actually, you know, they tend to go up and go down. This one actually comes down on its own because this is your main one because it controls your brake. Um, <coughs> this is your brake lever. This is for your rear brake. It's for your rear tire, so this activates, you know, your rear tire right now. So, you know, you basically push down on it, you know, with your toes or whatever cases. Your rear brake only activates 30%, about 30% of your braking power. You know, your true braking power is um, is all up front in the um, the front wheel, which is about 70%, you know, of, of your braking power. So, you're going to have to learn how to use the front brake correctly, and we'll do that, you know, in, in another video too. Um, but continuing the walk around, um, on this side, your controls... So you have your emergency. This is your emergency uh, emergency lights right here. So let's see if your bike stole out, whatever it takes you. You can get it on. Or you forgot how to get it back on. Get it going again for some reason. You know, you hit that on. Your emergency beam start flashing. You know, on, you know, on and off. Um, this is your um, your on and off button. Basically, it's to power on. Use your bike in kind of a neutral neutral state. Um, and then also to turn it off. So when you hit this, you make sure you turn it all the way, you know, turn it all the way off, you know, for it to actually be off because you don't want to use your battery, you don't run it overnight. So it's like, you know, you turn the car off and you just turn it, the key just to leave the fan on. The car is still running, the battery is still on, but there's no power going to the car. Um, but it's, it's the same as, as a motorcycle. But the thing with a motorcycle is that once you get off the bike, it looks like it's off. But it's not off, and if you don't push that all the way off, you're going to drain the battery, you know, of your bike. And you come in the next day, and the next thing you know, you have a dead bike, so you don't, you don't want that. Uh, so that's the point. Uh, these right here, this right here is your, your front brake. Like I said before, this activates about 70%, you know, of, of your power. Um, stopping power. Um, this is crucial in order in order to know how to how to, how to use that. Um, up front, this has uh, definitely has uh, ABS. Um, as you can see, ABS on here has uh, you know single disc. You know specs. You know I'm not gonna bore you with the specs. You can look into all of that. You know later. You know if you want to. But this is a uh, 2021. You know Yamaha R3. And I actually bought this, you know, in cash, um, right, right out the door. So, um, always try to find a good deal, you know, on these bikes. Um, it's not a good deal. It's not a good idea to, to pay, you know, um, dealership value for these bikes. Whatever bike you want, just go to the previous year or the previous two or three years. Get your bike used. You know, most people, they just buy a bike just because they like the way it looks. They don't really ride it or they just ride it on the weekend and then next thing you know they, they sell it back to the dealership so these bikes almost never lose their value but buying a bike brand new you got to pay all these ridiculous fees and you know if your bike costs eight thousand dollars by the time you finish with all the fees and setup fees and freight fees and blah blah fees and kiss my ass fees and all of this stuff you're going to be paying close to eleven thousand dollars you know, walking, you know, walking out the door, so, but anyway, so, this is my Yamaha, you know, R3, um, basically, I just wanted to show you all the controls, you know, we'll go through that, you know, one more time, um, got your clutch, clutch lever, you have your flicker, your, um, high beam flicker light right here, you have your high beam, your low beam, um, you have, um, your horn right here, and then below that you have you know, your turn your turn signals. This right here helps operate the clutch clutch lets you know how much you know tight or when does the clutch actually um, engage in the friction zone. So you can have a far out, you can have it you know close in. Me preferably preferably I kinda like it to be a little bit further out. Um 
QT um, reaction, reaction times. You don't want it too close to the handlebar, so when you have to shift, you may not get your uh, clutch level all the way to the end of the bar, and then when you go shift, you realize your bike don't do nothing. And it gives yourself a jerk, and you get scared, and then you crash. Um, this again, once again, this is your shift lever. Your shift lever is here. This is your pad. This is your um, foot peg uh, for you. So basically, your foot is here. Your foot goes under. You click up. You know, you click. You know, click down. Depending on the speed of your bike, we'll get into that in another another video. But like I said, it's one down to go into first gear. You click up slightly to go into neutral. Then you keep clicking up. You go in second, third, fourth, fifth gear. And that's when you actually pull in, you know, pull in the clutch lever, you know, pretty much at the same time. Um, this is your rear, you know, rear passenger peg. Um, like I said, I don't really use that too much. You know, my little suitcase, you know, bag back here. Insignia, you know, you got your, you know, rear disc, you know, back here. I love this color scheme, you know, to this bike. Um, you got your foot peg, you know, for you. You got your rear foot peg, so your rear foot peg, your rear foot peg. But this right here is your um, your brake lever. You know, your rear brake to activate your rear brake for your wheels. Um, again, front brake. It's your front brake up here. You have your turn on and off button, which is which is here. Um, then you have your emergency, you know, emergency lights. You know, which is here. These little knobs and bolts and stuff like that that you see on here, um, <clears throat> that's to help you adjust, you know, your brake lever and all, all this other stuff. But I don't recommend you mess with that, you know, unless you know exactly, you know, what, you, what you're doing. So, um, I got my little fluid, my fluid up here. Um, normally I cover that up with like a sock or something like that, but it's all right. So, once again, this is Bravo Savior. The Yamaha, oh man, beautiful bike. I love this bike. The Yamaha R3. Um, she is freaking sexy. I love it. Um, I love the power delivery. Um, I love riding this thing. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't ridden the motorcycle, I suggest you know that's that you do. And actually, I suggest everybody. You know, rides, you know, rides the motorcycle. Um, oh, one last thing. I did put some uh, protectors up here. Got a little tank protector, so, uh, tank protector. So when you lean over, if you have zippers or anything like that, this will help not scratch up your tank. You know, same from the, the sides, you know, over here. And then on, um, <laughs> then on this side, you know, two or two as well. You know, you gotta get the right ones that fit this particular model, you know, model of a bike. Uh, sometimes, you know, you get the cheap ones, they don't work, so you gotta get the official ones so that, you know, they actually work the stick on there, so. Little insignia, you know, looking beautiful, whatever the case is. Um, so I hope, you know, you guys can hear me. Um, this is my very first video, um, of being a rider. And, you know, like I said, I've been riding for about, you know, four years now. And I'm highly addicted. I hate cars. I will never ever go back to a car um, ever again. Um, but yeah, so let me know what you guys think, you know, in the comments below. Are you a rider? Are you a brand new rider? You know, have you been riding for 15 years, 30 years? Have you just started riding? You know, did you get your motorcycle license? You know, that'll be another video. You know, I do too as well. You know, make sure you have your motorcycle license before you start riding on these roads. You know, because if you get into an accident and you don't have a license, even though it can be the other driver's fault, you're automatically going to be at fault because you don't even have a license, you know, to drive. All right. So thank you much for tuning in. This is your boy, Kel. Uh, what? This your boy KL Ryder, and I am out of here. Bravo, Savior, baby. <laughs> <laughs>